Welcome to the Armchair Adventures Travel Agency, Journeys of the Imagination. I'm head travel agent and host, Connie. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're listening from Adventurers. The voices of today's adventurers are... Tilly, Jude, Chloe, Ella May, Charlie, Imogen, Bobby, Connor. Hi, everyone. Hi, Connie. You too can star in an episode of Armchair Adventures as one of our special guest adventurers. All you need to do is ask your grown-up if you can join the Armchair Adventures fan club on Patreon. Simply head to patreon.com and search Armchair Adventures for more info. Hello adventurers! My family are hosting some foreign exchange students at the moment. It's so cool finding out about their lives in another country. They've asked me to teach them about some British traditions and, as it's bonfire night, I thought I could take them to a fireworks display. The problem is I'm not sure why we celebrate it, why it's called bonfire night or what all this penny for the guy stuff is about. I've left it a little bit late to do any research too because it's November the 5th today and I'm in school all day. I'll never get the research done in time. What am I going to do? Oh, I know. My uncle Chris and his community theatre company love history. I'm going to give him a ring to see if they can help. Hello, Uncle Chris, dramatist extraordinaire speaking. How can I help? Hello, Uncle Chris, it's Connie. Oh, hello, love. What's happening? Well, I need some info about Bonfire Night. Oh, I love Bonfire Night. The fireworks, the toffee apples and getting wrapped up warm by the big fire. Uh, I sort of know all that stuff, Uncle Chris. I was thinking you might know a bit more about why we celebrate it. Oh, do you know? I'm not too sure of the specifics. Tell you what, Connie, me and the community theatre company absolutely love history. Leave it with us and we'll sort out all the info you need. I was hoping you'd say that, but there's just one thing. I need it by tonight. Tonight? Yeah, sorry it's so last minute. Don't worry, we'll sort it out for you. Thanks so much, Uncle Chris. Goodbye, Connie. Right, I'd better hurry up and get my community theatre company on the line for some bonfire night investigation. Because with an armchair adventure adventurers, we can go anywhere we like from the comfort of where we are right now. So they're perfect for everyone, no matter what age you are. Start. Call. Now. Hi everyone! Bonjour. How are you doing? Hello. Hi everyone. Hola. Greetings. Are we needed for an adventure, Uncle Chris? We sure are, Chris. Connie has asked me to find out everything about why we celebrate Bonfire Night to help her explain it to some exchange students that are staying with her. Well, I know there was some kind of plot to blow up Parliament. And someone called Guy Fawkes was involved. But I'm not too sure about the reasons why they were plotting. Or how and when everything happened. Me either. I just know the date it happened because of the rhyme about it. Remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. Then we'd better get on a journey of the imagination to London on the 5th of November 1605 and uncover the details of why we celebrate Bonfire Night as they happened. But it was a very dangerous time, Uncle Chris. For the plots against the king. Most of them to kill him. Mmm, yes. Sounds super serious. And we better take care. How will we do that, Uncle Chris? There's only one thing for it. We'll have to go undercover. Like secret detectives. From a cop show. Well, there wasn't any police in the 1600s. It was just the King's Guards keeping the peace. So it'd be more of a guard show in 1605. Hope we're part of a guard chase then. Oh, with horses instead of police cars. Or a sting operation. Where the guards do a surprise bust on someone who's up to no good. Stick them up, breathe! Get down on the ground. Yes, exactly like that. I'm sure there's a police uniform in here somewhere. Ta da! A high vis and walkie-talkie, not to mention my tall hat. Look, it's even got a blue flashing light on the top. And wait for it. A siren. (coughs) Oh, 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 Oh
you don't wear that on the cover, Uncle Chris. Or in 1605, when the gunpowder plot happened. Undercover means we're on a secret mission. So we can't stand out. We need to blend in with everyone else. Oh, of course. <laughs> Got too excited there. Definitely going to stand out in that get-up. What we need is... Lace-up boots and frilly cuffs. A big leather cape and a dark hood so we blend in. All those big baggy pants people used to wear. What are they called again? Pantaloons. That's it. A broad brim hat to cover our faces. Or a big dress like a barmaid of the time. Great ideas, everyone. What about you, adventurous? What would your 1605 undercover outfit be? I'd be in all black, hiding in the shadows. I want to look mysterious in a hat that covers my eyes. Very sneaky. I'd wear a fur cape, a fancy gown. Perfect undercover outfit ideas, everyone. And there is one more thing an undercover detective doesn't go on a case without. What's that, Uncle Chris? Their trusty notepad. We need to write down all of our findings for Connie like real detectives. Be sure to note everything about the plotters, the plot, and what happened to cause bonfire night. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, Pad. Now, let's put on our broad brim hats, pantaloons, or barmaid dresses, and get back to London town in 1605. A journey of the imagination, here we come! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love the history one. Oh, where have we landed, everyone? It looks like we're on London Bridge. I can hear the River Thames below us. And you have a big view of London. What can you see, adventurers? Everything's lit up with torches. The smelly River Thames. Ugh. I can see the King's Palace. Oh, that's massive. Look at the Tower of London over there. It's huge white towers. And fearsome gate. Complete with drawbridge. What a scary building. It should be scary. It's a prison. And a great place to start, I'd say. What? Keep your voice down, Chris. We're undercover. What? Much better. Well, we are here to get the facts about the bonfire night plot. And who better to tell us where to find the other plotters than the plotters that have already been caught plotting? There's the plotters in the plotters' prison. No thanks. Uh, I'm not yeah, going no, in no, there. No, I'm no, staying no. right here. Come on. It'll be fine. We just have to sneak across this bridge and pass the king's guards. <laughs> not to be a scaredy cat, Uncle Chris, but I don't think we should go there. We could end up locked in for trespassing. Or worse, tortured. He's right, Uncle Chris. I don't want to end up with my head on a spike like this lot at the start of the bridge. <laughs> It's a bit crucial. Oh, it's really real, Oh, dear. I forgot they did that to people that plotted against the king. You should listen to him, my old China. You don't want to be anywhere near that tower. Who said that? Me. Up here, fella. Head on a spike. No, oh, of course you can talk. We're on an armchair adventure. A journey of the imagination. You don't happen to be a plotter, do you? Got it in one, me old mucker. Me and the other heads on Sparch tried to kill the king with some poison, didn't we, lads? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, a poison plot. Why were you trying to kill the king? Hang on, Dan. This is important information. Detective notepads at the ready, everyone. Well, you see, there are two main religions in England these days, Catholic and Protestant. At first, he said he would let you pick which one you wanted. But now he's changed his mind and made it illegal to be Catholic. And it's not just that you can't be Catholic. They arrest you, fine you, put you in prison, and even sentence you to death. So yeah, me and the lads ended up getting caught, and now we're here on the bridge as a warning to all other plotters, I guess. Speaking of which, do you know one called Guy Fox? Of course, yeah. You wouldn't happen to know where they meet up, do you? Only the best plotting pub in London. The Duck and Drake Inn. Anyone who's anyone on the plotting scene meets in there. But you'll have to be quick about it. 
The plot was set to happen tonight. If you don't hurry up, you'll miss your chance. Thanks for your help. My detective notepad is off to a great start. Come on, Undercover Theatre Company, to the Duck and Drake! If you pass this way again, bring us an ale. We're parched up here. Will do. We've arrived, everyone. What a cool old building. It's painted white with black wooden beams. It looks like it's going to fall over, too. The way it leans forward. Right then, everyone. Let's try and sneak in. Slowly open the door. We're undercover, remember? Hello, everyone. We're undercover. <coughs> um... <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Uncle Chris, why isn't anyone saying anything? Why is everyone turning round and staring at us? They look really scary. Oi, you lot, <laughs> get over here. And everyone else, get back to your drinks. What do you want in here, then? We're here to learn about the gunpowder plot against King James I. Well... You've come to the right place. We're bursting at the seams with plotters here. Perfect. Could we ask you some questions about that? Of course, darling. Right. Detective notepads at the ready gang. Them lads over there are planning the by plot. They want to kidnap the king. Them over there are planning the treason of main plot. And they want to get rid of the king and replace him with his cousin, Lady Arabella Stewart, no less. And then... Sorry to interrupt, but are there any gangs in here plotting to blow him up? Oh, you want Robert Catesby's lot over there? No, it's not them we're after. We want Guy Fawkes' gang. Yeah, he's one of them, but he's not the leader. He's one of the Gunpowder Twelve. But there are 13 of them. Oh, yeah. They let that new lad, Francis Tresham, in last night. But between me and you, I don't like the looks of him. And, well, 13... It's my unlucky number. Mine too. Anyway, you're in luck, because they are putting the finer details on it tonight, so you'll hear everything you need. No trouble. Thanks for your help. My pleasure, darling. Right, who's next? Right, everyone. Did you get all that written down? Yep. Yeah. I want another book. Then let's sneak over and listen in to what we can find out. You too, undercover adventurers. Sneak over with us. Watch that creaky floorboard. That's natural. I'm on my tiptoe. Me too, so we don't make a sound. OK, now we're at the table. We need to get in closer to them so we can hear everything they say without blowing our cover. I'm going to pretend to collect some glasses from their table. I'll drop off some menus. I'm going to tie my bootlaces. What will you do, adventurers? I'll ask to borrow a chair. I'll bring over the drinks. I'll trip over nearby. I've got it. I'm going to sweep up around them. Great ideas, everyone. Now off you go, but stay undercover. And remember, write everything down. We need all that information about the plot. Right, oh, come trust on, us. I'll oh, get everything you need. Here we go. You too, adventurers. Excuse me, can I borrow a seat? Who are in a nail? I've fallen over. <laughs> Lift your feet, please. I'm just having a sweep. Psst! Come back, everyone! Come back, come back! What did you find out? Oh, they have just said that Guy Fox is in charge of the gunpowder because he was in the army. They have rented a space under Parliament and filled it with three score barrels of gunpowder. How many is three score? Sixty! That's be a big kabloo, eh? Definitely. What did you find out, adventurers? Robert Cates before of the plan. And got all these rich friends involved. So they can help buy the gunpowder. And help run the country after they built the king. Ah, so Guy Fawkes is going to be under the Houses of Parliament waiting to set off the gunpowder, but Robert Catesby is the mastermind behind the whole plan. Well, I never. <gasps> Careful, gang. Act natural. They're all leaving. <laughs> you two adventurers. Oh, mate, I'm just standing by this wall. Nothing to see here. Just enjoying the surroundings, you know. Doop -de -doop -de -doo. Oh, I fell over. Again. 
Well, they are all leaving, Uncle Chris. That new recruit, Tresham, is staying behind to write a letter. Do you think he's up to something? Up to something? I am. Oh. oh, don't be acting so surprised. I can see you all listening in. But I'm undercover. Then you must try harder. Faffing about around our table and then repeating what we say back to each other before writing it in your little notepads sort of gives you away. That's... Oh, don't worry. I love an audience. And now you get to admire my letter. Who are you writing to? Are your notepads at the ready? Ready! Then get all this down. As you know, we're going to blow up the King and Parliament as we aren't very happy with how he's running things. However, we're not just ruffians, you know. Ah, have well-to-do relatives in Parliament, you see, and I can't be blowing up my own family. Therefore, I'm just writing a little letter in code to warn them. <clears throat> my Lord, I want to make sure you are safe, blah, blah, blah. I would advise you not to sit in Parliament because its wickedness is going to be punished, blah, blah, blah. Do not think this is a joke. Go to your estate in the country, as this Parliament will take a terrible blow. Don't ignore this letter. Burn it after reading. God save you, blah, blah, blah. Perfect. No. Um, well, I do think it sounds great, blah, blah, blah. And it is noble to keep your family safe, blah, blah, blah. Don't you think blow is a bit obvious? Blah, blah, blah. Why do you keep saying blah, 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 Uncle Chris? Just speaking like the people of the time, Ross. That's not how people spoke in the 1600s, Uncle Chris. It's just what you say to move things on quickly. All oh, right. Gotcha. Oh, I don't mean to patronise you, but I've been writing letters for years, so I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> now, be a good chap and take this Lord Monteagle. He's staying at the manor at the end of the road. It's of the utmost urgency with the plot happening tonight. <gasps> Thank you much, Lee. Bye! Well, if we have all that written down, we'd better get our skates on to deliver this letter before it's too late. While we make our way over to Lord Monteagle's house, let's pause our journey of the imagination and hear about another podcast I think you might like. Hey listeners, this is Jonathan Cormer, and I'm Sir Reginald T. Hedgehog. We're from Dorktale Storytime, a podcast for kids and their pop culture loving grown-ups. We tell fractured fairy tales with a geekish twist, hidden hero histories, and world-building lore stories. So come on down to Once Upon a Time to laugh, learn, and delight in a tale well told. Find us at dorktalestorytime.com. Now let's get back to our journey of the imagination and get this letter delivered while we still have time. This must be the place. How can you tell? Well, it says Monteagle in gold letters above the door. Oh, yeah. Best give it a knock. Take that! Um, yes? What do you want? Well, we have an anonymous letter here for you, sir. Anonymous, eh? Very well. Pass it here. Looks like Francis Tresham, my brother-in-law's handwriting, if you ask me. Right, what have we here? Stay safe at Manor. Parliament's wickedness. Not a joke. Blow Parliament? Hang on. Is this person going to blow up the Houses of Parliament and kill the King? Well, <laughs> yes. You better get out of here like the letter says. You don't want to get hurt. Get out of here? You must be joking. I'll have to tell the King. I can't be getting mixed up in all this. My head will end up on London Bridge. Looks like this letter isn't written in a very subtle code after all. And you lot are a bit suspicious. You just happen to deliver this letter full of plotting to me. You must be involved. Guards, seize them. 
You must answer to the king. Take them to the tower. The tower? Well, we haven't done anything. Excuses, excuses. Gods! <laughs> Time to get out of here. Run! You two adventurers. Let's get out of here. Run! I'm too young to die. Why do we always end up on the run with you, Uncle Chris? Yeah, it's every adventure. Keep going. We need to get out of here. Ah, cover it, Flo. It's a medieval police chase. A guard chase, just like we wanted. I'm not sure I want it anymore, and now it's happened. Oh, no, the cat's in all. They're hosting our heels. Get back here. We need speed. Look over there, a horse and cart. Excuse me, can we borrow your vehicle? Eh? Uh, horse and cart. You can, but it'll cost you. Oh dear, how much? Ten pence. Ten pence? Sold? Oh, actually, I don't have any change. Will a pound do? A pound? <laughs> you can keep it then. Yippee! I'm rich! Wait, get on. Give me a nice dog. Good job. Oh. That was easy. What a bargain. Well, a pound was a lot of money in 1605, Uncle Chris. The guards are on horseback too. We need to hurry. They've nearly got us. We need to get out of here. Right you are, gang. Giddy up. Ride on the cart with us, adventurers. It's going really fast. The streets are very cobbly. I'm scared the wheels will break off. Getting away from them. The streets are really narrow. I hope we don't crash. Right, we need to lose these guards pronto. Go faster, horsey! Fly like the wind! Join us next time, adventurers, and see if we can get out of this one! Armchair Adventures is a Made by Mortals production. This episode was funded by the Arts Council England. Thank you.